Hello and welcome back to Curiously Polar, the show about every, every, all the things north and south. I'll have to relearn this every week, but uh, it doesn't matter. My name is Chris Marquardt and uh, the person next to me, the, the man who's smiling and laughing at me is Henry. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are slightly technically challenged today, including my network acting up and your microphone stand um, acting up. You have to hold it today. <laughs> it just broke. It's perfect. <laughs> you look a bit like a 50s musician. Uh, yeah. I, singing I wish rock I could and sing roll. like a 50s musician, but no, you don't want to hear that. I'm not going to call you Elvis. So let us uh, <laughs> look into today's topic. It is, by the way, as we record this, the 2nd of December. 2020 and um that the ominous title of this episode is collision course what does that mean it's about a topic we already covered uh in episode 95 which mm. is the largest iceberg floating in our oceans currently iceberg i68a and oh i remember that one yes it's it was an amazing experience to just zodiac cruise it in in march and a lot has happened since March. The iceberg has traveled a lot. It um, went through a lot of change during uh, Antarctic winter. And now in uh, Antarctic summer, it just moved significantly further north. And it's actually on a direct course to one of the most precious areas down there. And that is the island of South Georgia. And is that bad? I mean, is, is it going to crash into South Georgia or how, how can I imagine that? I mean, I remember it's, 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 it's massive in size. It is really big. It is massive. It's twice the size of Luxembourg or roughly the size of Delaware. So it's, <laughs> it's still 4,700 square kilometers. And just to give you a comparison, the, the overall area of South Georgia is 3,600 square kilometers. So the iceberg is in size, in area larger than South Georgia. And this gives you an idea why it's uh, such an am amazing title for this episode. If the iceberg goes somewhere close by, then this is actually a one-to-one -one comparison. So the iceberg uh, covering pretty much the same size. But is, is, is there a chance that the iceberg will crash into South Georgia and just eliminate it? Or how can I imagine that? Or would it just no, it's not, gently it's not float about around it? So when we talk about this iceberg, um, we have to remember it's uh, roughly 150, 160 kilometers long and <laughs> roughly 40 kilometers wide. But it's extremely thin for its size. It's only 200 meters, uh, 200 meters thick. So that means we, we see roughly 100, um, uh, we see roughly 40, 50 meters um, above the surface and 150 160 meters below the surface. Yeah. And that means it can get actually very, very close to South Georgia. And why is that? Um, we will see a little later when we when we have some uh, maps in uh, in the show. But um, let's just pick up the first uh, media we have. So we can just have a, a little look where A68A was coming from. And you can see on the on, on those uh, two pictures, those two pictures are covering exactly the same area with a year difference. In uh, July 2017, this huge rift just um, yeah, created the iceberg A68 uh, from Larsen, from the Larsen uh, Sea Ice Shelf. And on the top, on the uh, yeah, on, on the on the top of A68, there is a tiny little bit that broke off immediately after this iceberg was formed. Um, and then the uh, yeah the the terms oh, are just I, proceeding. I just understood the picture. Sorry to interrupt you here. So so what we're looking at is at the left bottom there is the uh, the mass that it broke off of, and then in the middle we see the iceberg and it's it's drifting to the right towards the right top. So exactly yeah. Okay. On the now, left now side it. we okay. have the it, that's the extent is the border of the ice shelf of the Larsen Sea ice shelf mm -hmm. and the the island in the middle where we have the label A68A on this is the iceberg so that's the the original size yep. of that iceberg and it's and only within, moving like this is one year apart these two pictures 
Exactly, that's one year apart, so and within this motion, first yeah. year, there is almost no movement. Yeah. And the reason for that is that the area around last night's shelf is usually very, very densely covered with sea ice, uh -huh. so there is not much chance to uh, to move away. And actually, it took much, much longer for the iceberg to actually leave really the area of the last night's shelves and go along the uh, Antarctic Peninsula, leaving the uh, Weddell Sea and go into the Southern Ocean. But I just see. to give you an idea where it originates from and how it looked like. So that's the original size of it. And if you want to swap to the next... Let me see. we have. Yeah, uh, here we go. So this is um, a system called Polar View, where uh, satellite data is uh, implemented. And what we can see here, the dark gray area on the uh, bottom right, that's the Antarctic continent. And you can see in the middle of the picture, this uh, what almost looks like a spine or a tail, that's the Antarctic Peninsula. On the left side, on the bottom, you see uh, Tierra del Fuego, which is like the um, the southern so, tip of Patagonia. So, so it's not quite north-south, it's slightly uh, rotated towards uh, the left. Exactly. Okay. okay. And the reason why we rotated that is um, on top in the middle of the picture you have this grey little island that is South Georgia and between South Georgia and South America you have the Falkland Islands on the left part of the picture. Yeah. The white area here, that is sea ice. So we talked about sea ice one or two episodes ago, I think two episodes ago, the Antarctic sea ice. So what we can see here is different um, different colors in the sea ice. And that gives you an idea how, how thin or how, uh, how thick it is. The whiter it is, the thicker the sea ice is. The bluer it is, the thinner and yeah, more fragile it is. Right. And here we can actually access pictures, satellite pictures of every single day. And what we also see is the bathymetry. We see a little bit of the seafloor underneath, under the ocean. And if you would like to select on the uh, monthly selector, just March, that's when I met the iceberg. Let's go 1st of March. This is what it looks like uh, over half a year ago. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So this is Antarctic summer. It's almost the end of the Antarctic summer. You see there is almost no sea ice left in the Verdell Sea, but you still see some. Um, and at the top of the Antarctic Peninsula, you see the slightly um, plain uh, large piece. That is the iceberg A68A. And you can see this iceberg is larger than all the islands of the <laughs> South Shetland Islands. So crazy. It's even larger than the South Orkneys, which is north of the peninsula right now. It's just really a huge piece of ice. And if you just want to start the animation, then we can yeah. see how the iceberg moves and also how the sea ice moves. It develops, it grows larger. So winter's coming, the sea cools down. You see that the iceberg is moving. That's when we met it, when it was just rotating in that Powell Basin, as it's called, in the area. There's a now little it's mini kind of gyre. merging almost with the sea ice. Exactly. The sea ice is growing and the sea ice is encapsulating it. Then it just breaks off. Then the current just takes it back. This, the, the, the water around the iceberg is, of course, a bit colder than um, yeah, similar waters at the, uh, at the same latitude. But then the sea ice just grabs it completely so this until is it then end ends of September, of September now. September. Yeah. That's the end of the winter. And you see it breaks off. And like a little fish, it just follows the current oh of the it Antarctic circumpolar current. Exactly. And now it moves with roughly a kilometer per day. So that's a... A significant speed and wow. this picture this is first of december gives you a little impression of what kind of distance it just the iceberg just moved i want to see that again let me go back to october sure. 1st and just start it at october 1st because that's when it kind of seems to like begin moving oh man that is fast <laughs> this is really fast this and is now we are and we're yeah n now we're today or yesterday and what surprises scientists here is the fact that this iceberg is so super thin. If you would compare it to paper, it would have like the size of an A4 sheet, but it's just like four or five sheets um, stapled together. So really? that's the comparison of the size and the thickness. And if you just imagine that kind of piece of, of ice, it's super um, 
astonishing that this iceberg still is intact in this size, that it hasn't broken uh, off yet from uh, all those uh, your rough seas in the Antarctic circumpolar currents that there is nothing um, significantly broken off. Of course, how there are a lot of is it, how thick is it again? Roughly two hundred meters. Two hundred meters and uh, hundred and sixty kilometers long. Exactly. Uh huh. So it's like it, it's like a floating credit card, if you like. <laughs> It's just very, pretty, a very much cold and big one. <laughs> <laughs> a very cold and big credit card. But that's pretty much it. And it's it, not exactly. accepted everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, wow. This is... Um, so so it's it's not a direct collision course uh, with South Georgia right now. It is moving in the general vicinity. And this is something that scientists are discussing right now. So we have a 50-50 chance that it goes... Um, closer to moves closer to South Georgia and as you can see the area around South Georgia is slightly gray so this is much shallower water than the deep basin of the Scotia Arc there the, the, mm -hmm. the your mini plate if you like we have there and this basin is up to four and a half five kilometers deep and then we have kind of a sockle, socket um, so as Georgia sits on and we have a socket that's very very narrow so the iceberg with only 200 meters um, thickness can move very very close to the island itself and now just remembering we've talked about uh, South Georgia quite a number of times already yeah. South Georgia is something very very precious in the uh, southern ocean we have roughly 5 million seals of all types there on that island who are breeding there. We have roughly 1.5 million different penguin species breeding there. We have num numerous whales coming there to feed in the area. It's a very productive area around that island. The reason for that, for that is that the, the Southern Ocean there just has the possibility to um, you gather a lot of nutrition on those shallow waters around South Georgia, but also has the ability of the deeper uh, sea bats very, very close to the island. So foraging our uh, land-based um, predators, they can just leave the island and they can very quickly access um, you know, food sources and just return to uh, South Georgia to feed their uh, their, their chicks uh, for, for the penguins, for example. So. When we have this iceberg moving very, very close to the island, then we have the possibility that the iceberg might ground itself on the ice shelf. And that, yeah, it, it inherits a natural um, threat to the island in a number of ways. So what we have here is this humongous piece of ice of the same size of the island. And if it just grounds on the shelf, it cuts off the resupply routes for penguin pup, uh, for penguin chicks or seal pups. Oh. Especially okay. in a time when those chicks are in, an, in, in the urgent need of food, when they grow the fastest, if you like. And if those, uh, if the iceberg just grounds, then the uh, the time the adults need to uh, go out for, for hunting prey is just significantly longer. And that's the time that uh, a chick or a pop can't cover to grow um, exceptionally. And that uh, inherits a natural threat for the entire population of so, both seals and penguins there. So where... Um I mean, it is likely to to uh, run aground somewhere around South Georgia. But just looking at the trajectory, um, the question is, where would be a good place for it to run aground and stay? Um, where would where would it not cause as much damage to the penguin populations? That's very very difficult to say. I I would say the the southern part of South Georgia is probably the best uh, place since more um, of the larger colonies are on the northern shore of South mm -hmm. Georgia. But this is just an uneducated guess. So there are yeah. scientists out there who have much better guess. And as I say, it's a 50-50 chance. So there is a big chance that the iceberg just follows the so-called iceberg alley, uh, just picked up by the, uh, by the currents, and is just pushed around the southern tip of South Georgia and then follows the gyre around the tip towards the north mm -hmm. and enters the uh, South Atlantic 
where it then hopefully um, just passes the island very quickly. Does the fact that it is a very shallow iceberg that is very thin compared to its size uh, have any impact on that? Does that uh, influence how the currents pick it up? Yeah, so it's for, for its size, it's uh, much lighter than it could be with uh, thicker ice. So it travels um, much faster. It's easier affected by, uh, by, by ocean currents and by wind. Uh -huh. So that's actually a, a good thing for, for the iceberg. It's also bad. It really depends where the currents are taking the iceberg. It's re it really depends how the wind direction is developing in the next couple of days. And when the iceberg just um, gets grounded, that's just the, the moment um, when, yeah, when scientists really have, for the very first time, a chance to... Uh, yeah, build a data set on on uh, yeah such an impact. Right. We had a similar um, situation in two thousand and four with A thirty eight B that broke off uh, also in the Weddell Sea, but not from Larsen, but from the uh, Ron Ice Shelf. And the largest piece, which was roughly one thousand four hundred square kilometers, that got grounded in the uh, southeast. Um, of uh, South Georgia, and that had a, a big impact for a number of seasons. Um, there were uh, the, the, the colonies crashed uh, on South Georgia because it just blocked off those foraging routes for um, penguins and seals. Right. And that's a, a quarter to a third of the size of the iceberg we're talking on right now. So it gives you an, in, an idea and an Im impact uh, idea of um, what to expect there. And if this iceberg gets grounded, then this will stay there for quite some time and I heard numbers up to 10 years. Mm. So this will have a huge impact on the entire ecosystem at South Georgia and might cause the threat that the entire ecosystem on South Georgia just crashes. So looking at the speed it was moving, uh, we should probably know in the next, well, I don't know, three, four months, right? Yeah, probably, probably even less. Um, yeah, probably in one month we can see um, it slows oh. down right now. We can see that um, the, the the currents around South Georgia are not as fast as in the Southern Ocean, um, like directly in the mid of the Antarctic Circumpolar Current. But we we can see um, that it also shifts a little bit towards the uh, towards the east. So it just with a bit of luck, it really just um, yeah passes through the gates and just does not ground on on the continental socket there. It's just just amazing to see that, and it's also amazing that we have the technology to make that uh, to, to take a picture every day and and make it available on a website so everyone can uh, click on it and see how it moves. So this is a definitely a link that goes in the show notes. And this is uh, not so good quality. So if you yeah. just hop on to the next one from uh, from NASA, um, that now one? we show that the, the, no, not one one further. Huh? Are we missing one? It's is the that last, the one? This is it. Is this okay. is okay? The NASA Worldview. There we have. Um, yeah, also daily satellite views. Here you see you have a lot of interference with clouds. So, so, so what are we looking at here? This is um, the the that's the Southern Ocean, southern... and and you see the the, the island, um, the outline of the island there. That is South oh, that's Georgia. South Georgia. And if I move those, those are daily changes, but that includes the clouds, which are not in the other one. So, if we look at the center of the picture, roughly there is the iceberg. Exactly and the big if I slide white this plane day area. by day. Yeah, you can see it starts. I'm it going starts, back and forth um, here. Circling again, but it, it's it seems and to circle away from South Georgia to the to the left of it. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. The the the, ah, the likelier last days it keeps picking up it towards South Georgia again. Okay, and this is it's it's likely uh, this this is actually kind of the the edge at the uh, Scotia arc uh, which we have there so that's at the edge of the deeper ba uh, basin there and the shallower um scotia ridge i mean just imagine so we, you are you are there's <laughs> the you you live in a country and there is a an iceberg coming toward you the size of that country is just it's so unfathomable this is just crazy this is so crazy 
It is. Luckily, there are not many uh, people living in South Georgia. I'm, I'm pretty sure if this iceberg gets um, much closer, the population of South Georgia will suddenly explode um, just in a number of scientists going down to actually study <laughs> the iceberg and study the impact of the iceberg in the area. Population so uh, growth uh, relative to no one living there is quite dramatic then, yes. Indeed. Oh, man. So, so my... my um, assumption is that the current will just pick up the iceberg, which is uh, right now on a northern uh, move, and just will push it to the east. And oh. that's the, the threat um, here, because when it moves east on the latitude it is right now, it very likely will um, be get very close to, to the island and has a chance of getting grounded there. Does the, uh, yeah, just, do the do the scientists have like a, do they do they have bets? Is there a way to get in on those bets? Because I mean, I'm sure there are bets, but I'm I'm also aware that they're not sharing those. <laughs> <sighs> okay, what there else are have you us? There are assumptions, and it's a fifty-fifty. Okay, and really, it's uh, not really clear. Okay. Um, we have two more graphics for you, and um, this one exactly is a wonderful. Um, bathymetric map. So that's the topography of the uh, of the seafloor. Oh, the red one the is the seafloor around South Georgia. Yeah. So you see the, the grey one, that's South Georgia and the islands belonging to South Georgia and the red one and the blue one and everything that's differently coloured than grey, that's the seafloor. And the that's blue the depth one, pretty much. Exactly. The blue one is very, very deep and you see the small numbers in there. Can you see the numbers? Let me try to zoom in here. Uh... Here we go. There you go. So it's 150, 200, 250. So the rat area covers pretty much 250 meters depth. We remember the iceberg has a thickness of 200 meters, possibly 100, 150 meters um, below surface. So it so can get fairly it, close, yeah. Exactly. That's the big issue here. It's not that it can get grounded. It if it gets grounded, it gets grounded very close to the um, to the coast. And if you remember the size of the iceberg being pretty much exactly the same size as the island itself, it will block a tremendous area. This is a significant detour uh, at the axis for food. So if it gets grounded here on the southern side of South Georgia, is, is there a chance that the, the currents are strong enough to rip it free and uh, so it starts moving again? Or is that just... Not no, the the odds are um, more towards the iceberg breaking um, apart. So if it grounds, if it gets grounded okay. there, the rough seas probably will rather um, break the iceberg apart. There are a number of uh, ridges, uh, really deep ridges within the iceberg. So most scientists are really surprised that it hasn't break, broken off um, yet. Mm -hmm. And I, had the, I mean, it's over three years now that the iceberg is uh, floating. It's a Given the thin uh, layer of the ice, it's really a surprise that it managed to stay uh, intact for such a long time. So if it gets grounded there, it might just break off. But this is probably also not a good thing because then you have more pieces which are still significantly large. So they can actually block more area than just if it's, uh, if it's just one piece. So the the best hope at this very moment is that the iceberg just makes it around he can swing around the southern edge of south georgia and uh, gets not attached somewhere to the shelf of south georgia and if you want to jump into the to the last picture then we uh, see here the, uh, british the british antarctic Ar survey exactly south georgia is a british antarctic um, overseas territory and you see here some 3D models. So the, the mountains there, that's the island of South Georgia. And then you see the, the shelf. It's really like a, like a big cake in the middle of the deep uh, Southern Ocean. And you have different uh, colors for different things. You have a current speed, um, you have the temperature of the sea, you have the salinity, and the intensity of the color shows the more intense the color, the higher the values. Then you have the uh, productivity right here. And the last one is the more important for us right now, and that's the depth. You can see how deep the ocean is um, around that shelf and how quick it actually grows onto oh, wow. into that island. And down here, how it's like close. Five, five kilometers deep. Wow. Exactly. Yeah, the, the um, Scotia Sea goes down to 5,000 meters, the South Atlantic as well, even uh, deeper. But 
you can see how close the iceberg can actually get. And again, if you see the spine of those mountains there, the iceberg has a similar size. So that would just block the entire side of one uh, one side of, of that island. That's just huge. It's really humongous there. Has a big impact on the uh, wildlife, also on the marine wildlife. And the impact is not only the momental impact uh, when the iceberg is in the vicinity of South Georgia. It's also when this iceberg gets grounded and it melts, it releases a lot of fresh water into, into the sea there. That means the salinity level will just drop. And by that, the productivity level of the waters will just drop significantly. And that will be an effect that will last much, much longer than just the sheer um, presence, the physical presence of the iceberg. Wow. Okay. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. I, I think we will probably revisit the iceberg uh, in a few months and see where it's going. This is this is like this is really interesting because for me this is really interesting because it is um, something that doesn't happen on the order of like years, but it happens on the order of weeks and months. And uh, this way, it gets so much more tangible. So much. Uh, it's something that I can that I can watch and see and uh, see it develop over over just a short time. I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, amazed. I'm really amazed. Thanks for bringing that here. Uh, me too. And um, the funny thing is in March when we had the chance to uh, Zodiac cruise that iceberg or a, a tiny part of that iceberg, that was a very productive area. Well, no, no, you had a number of, of humpback and fin whales and a humongous number of, of seals around in the area. And we, we sat to ourselves as guides. That's a once in a lifetime experience. Looking at those pictures and the possibility of the iceberg being grounded in South Georgia, it might be more than once in a lifetime uh, possibility for, yeah. for us as guides. And I'm really curious um, how fast the iceberg moves and if it will be in the area when the next Antarctic season starts in October, November. I'm really, really curious. That's a interesting um, item to yeah pursue here. All right. So thank you so much for bringing that. Um, I guess that is another episode in the can. Curiously Polar coming to you from, uh, well, two places across the world. No, not, not as across anymore as we used to be. Um, if you uh, enjoyed this episode, if you have remarks, if you want to um, have some, if you have a topic that, that you want to suggest, uh, shoot us an email, info at curiouslypolar.com or... Um, Get in touch on our social media, Curiously Polar on Twitter and on Insta. And of course, we have our website, curiouslypolar.com and all the other episodes wherever you find your podcasts. Um, that was it for today. Till next week. Take care and bye-bye. Bye-bye.